Okay, what we're going to do today is look at balancing equations. So here's some uh, Tyler DeWitt videos, uh, good examples of balancing equations. And just to summarize real quick before I do some examples, this is burning natural gas. So this is methane. It takes oxygen, and we're going to get carbon dioxide and water. But the law of conservation of matter says we cannot lose elements from one side to the other, from the reactant side to the product side. So we need to have the same exact number of atoms on both sides. So in this example, <clears throat> we have one carbon on the reactant side. We have one carbon on the product side. We have four hydrogens on the reactant side. And on the product side, those hydrogens are bounded to water. And since there's four hydrogens here, we actually need to put a coefficient of two to get four hydrogens on this side. And the oxygen, we need to put two here because we have four oxygens then on the reactant side, two oxygens here plus the two oxygens here makes a four on the product side. Okay, so please fill this out and we'll meet you on the next page. Now, here is the order that we should balance equations. Now, again, balancing equations is just getting these coefficients. So we're going to do compounds with polyatomic ions first then you want to do metals, then nonmetals except hydrogen and oxygen, then hydrogen and oxygen last. And the reason you want to do uh, polyatomic ions first is if you have formulas of compounds like this one, in parentheses, that's an acetate, well, you're kind of taking care of oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon all at the same time. And we want to do oxygen last because look at, here's four times, there's eight oxygen here. Most of our polyatomic ions from our pink sheet, you know, we've got oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So these polyatomic ions have oxygen, so we want to leave those for last. Okay, so we're going to do this example for one. It says write the balanced equation for the reaction of molecular nitrogen and oxygen. So N2 plus O2 to form dinitrogen pentoxide. So dinitrogen N2 pentoxide O5. Okay, now there is, so I want to do these steps. There's no parentheses. There are no polyatomic ions. And again, let me put this in here. Polyatomic ions, you might have like nitrate in parentheses or C2H3O2 in parentheses. There is no polyatomic ions. There are no metals. And you might be saying, well, where the heck are the metals? Again, the metals are to the left of this staircase line over in here. In this area, for sure, we have metals, nonmetals in here. So nonmetals except hydrogen and oxygen, and then hydrogen and oxygen last. So it looks like we can start with nitrogen, because we want to do oxygen last. So we have two nitrogens and two nitrogens. That's good. But for oxygens, we have two, and we have five. And the least common multiple of that is going to be 10. So we're going to have to put a two here, and we always multiply. Two times five is 10 oxygen. And 5 times 2 is 10 oxygen. But now we have 2 times 2 is 4 nitrogen. So I have to put a 2 there as well. OK, in this next example, I put this on here just to show you a trick here. So we have C2H6 plus O2. So there are no parentheses. We would, there are no metals, so we'd start with carbon. Two carbons, one carbon. Now we have two 
two carbons on both sides. Now we'll do hydrogen. There is six hydrogen here, two hydrogen here. So if we put a three there, we get six hydrogen. And now the oxygen total on the right is three times one. There's three oxygen here plus two times two is four. There's seven oxygen on the right. And there's two on the, this is, no matter what number I put in front of this O2, it's going to create an even number of oxygen on the reactant side over here. So a three times two is six, a four times two is eight. No matter what, once you multiply a number by two, it creates an even number. So here's a little trick when you have something like this, especially for a combustion, this is a combustion reaction involving O2, you double everything and come back to this. So if we double everything, I'm going to change colors. We need to put a 2 here. That's going to create 4 here. It's going to create 6 here. And now we have six times one plus eight we have 14 oxygen on the right so we should be able to put a seven here now if you're new to balancing equations you can always do an equal everything's got to be equal so you can say four carbons on the left equals four carbons on the right 12 hydrogen equals 2 times 6, 12. 6 times 2, 12 hydrogen. And so on with the oxygen. Okay. So let's go down here. Now this says balancing equations hand out 28 and 40. So there is a balancing equations handout that looks like this. If you are new to balancing equations, here is a worksheet you can do with the answers all provided. Now notice that the first seven are all balanced as written. Oh, I'm sorry, when we get to number six, there is a two there. So a lot of the first ones are balanced as written. But here's all the answers. And if you think you know how to balance, try 35. That'll test you. If you can do 35, you know how to balance. OK, so this, work on this if you need extra help balancing equations. So this is number 28 from that sheet. We are definitely have parentheses, polyatomic ions. So we have acetate here, C2H3O2. We have four of them. And on this side, we only have one acetate. So if we do this as one unit, we're going to put a four in front of this. Now we have four acetates on the left and we have four acetates on the right. And the acetates are the, not including the hydrogen here, there's my acetates on both sides. Okay, so that takes care of the polyatomic ions. I want to do metals next. And lead is a metal. There's one lead and one lead. Now I want to go to nonmetals, and that would be sulfur. So I want to do hydrogen and oxygen last. So I've got two sulfurs here and only one sulfur here, so I need to put a two. And I think that is going to do it. Because look at what I have here. I have 2 times 2. I have 4 hydrogens. 
And four times one is four hydrogens. Okay. Let's do number 40 here from the handout. Now, I have polyatomic ions. In fact, I've got a lot of them here. I have OH hydroxide here, and I have hydroxide here. I have phosphate, PO4 here, and I have phosphate here. And I'm out of another color. Well, maybe this yellow here is a different color. I've got, it looks like it is, I have ammonium here. Nah, that didn't work out very well. And ammonium here. So, let's do, it doesn't matter which way we start. You can start with any of these. Um... I want to do this PO4 here because that has a lot of oxygens in it. So if I start with this PO4, I have two PO4s here and only one here. So I'm going put to a, put a two out front. Then, since I just changed the number of ammonium here, this NH4, to two times three, which is six, let's put a six right here. That gives me six NH4s. Okay, so I've got my PO4s. I got my NH4s. Now let's look at OH. I have six OHs here. And I'll have two OHs here, so I need to put a three here. And notice that takes care of the barium as well. So we have this one balanced. And if you really want to know if you have it balanced, double check your number of oxygen. We have 2 times 4, we have 8 oxygen here. 3 times 2 here, 6. We've got 14 oxygen on both sides, which matches 4 times 2 here, 8, and 6 times 1. So this is all balanced. Okay. So that's some uh, balancing equations. Again, Tyler DeWitt's got some good videos. And fill this in, and I'll do another recording.